Today on Country Squire Radio, it's a... Here's what we're looking at now. As you can see, I've been getting some stuff done. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory. From the premier source of Pipe and Tobacco News, it's Briar Report. Dave here, the Hype Pirate, and how are you all doing tonight? Uh, yeah, I know I said we weren't going to have any content coming up next week, but last week, but we do. I have Greg waiting in the wings, ready to go. Everything's just working out just fine for that. So, with that all being said, how are you doing tonight, Greg? Good that, uh, now that my son is, uh, rusting a bit more. Yes, that is always a plus. We are waiting for Elizabeth to get to that point, too. But, you know, if every kid's different. Our three boys all took about two weeks, and then they, uh, you know, finally got into it, except for Alex, and we'll see with her. And you'll find the same. Like, what, happen- like, what happens with Milo will probably not happen with my daughter. Yeah, uh... I mean, I've talked about it with one of my friends, and he said that uh, um, Milo is acting very similar to his uh, first child, and uh, <clears throat> that over time he'll uh, he'll he'll get a bit better with his uh, resting habits. Yeah, it's just they they get used to a certain uh, routine and whatnot in the womb, so it is what it is, and until they flip to the regular day night cycle and start sleeping a little bit more. That's what you get to deal with, lack of sleep. Yeah. Last night he actually slept uh, the longest uh, period he has been from, uh, I think he slept around uh, six hours or eight hours, one of the two, without uh, getting us up. Nice, nice. So, everybody who's watching the video, sorry, I'm adjusting things on the fly here. Um, New camera. I think it looks pretty good. I'm, well, I'll have to check the final product because, you know, I look like I'm about, you know, this big on the screen, roughly. So, it looks good over there, but will it look good in final? I have no idea. And, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a fisheye effect here going on. You probably noticed. I'll point it out right away. There's nothing I can do to get rid of it. The camera is actually set. This camera is actually uh, meant for group meetings over Skype and, and Zoom. So, you know, they're expecting like three or four people to be sitting in a row. So they fish eyed the camera and uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's just me. But uh, you can see a little bit more of what's going on behind me this way. Stuff you don't normally see in the tight shot. Yeah, I thought that the angle was uh, a little bit different. It's the same position, pretty much like the both lenses. Like I've got the the old camera here. Like you don't see it, Greg, but that's the camera I'm now using to do the intro with just me mm-hmm. on the on the thing on the TV that I've got yeah. us on now. And uh, yeah, the lenses are basically the same place, but uh, you know, the angle, it's just because it's 110 degrees field of vision. So thank gosh uh, yeah, that I think God that I made this uh, overlay here because otherwise like everything that you can see, mm-hmm. like my lights, and all my wires hanging around and whatnot, everybody else would be able to see too, but they can't, so I'm grateful for that. Yes, I'm uh, I'm thankful they can't see the uh, untidiness that's all around me at the moment. I'm grateful I can't see it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a general episode. We don't have anything really planned and set. We were going to do Mandalorian uh season one episode six tonight but uh i just didn't get a chance to watch it yet as it was okay with me because i hadn't uh i wasn't able to get to it quite yet well that worked out perfectly then yes thankfully i think i would have actually been a little bit rushed too to, (laughs) to finish it all up You know, it's not that I didn't have time. It's, I'll be honest, I just never thought of it. I 
was doing other things, playing Minecraft mostly, and uh, it just slipped my mind because I was yeah. going, oh, let's do some Minecraft, watch The Mandalorian, go to bed. Okay, time to get off Minecraft. Look at the time. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> that game is strangely addictive. Yeah. Have you seen the trailer for um, uh, the Minecraft characters in Super Smash Brothers for Switch? No, I have not. Yeah, I uh, I have the first fighter pack. Um, this is the second fighter pack, mm -hmm. which uh, Microsoft's been gracious enough to kind of uh, work with Nintendo to first bring uh, Banjo and Kazooie over, which, you know, they used to be, you know, Nintendo characters, but then they went over to Microsoft when uh, Rare was purchased by them. But uh, they've always kind of been thought of as Nintendo characters, so they were brought back, and now actually they brought uh, uh, the Minecraft characters. Uh, uh, Steve, um, the girl character, and then Alex. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, Alex, and then uh, I think a, a zombie and uh, one other character. But uh, they have, uh, yeah, pretty unique. Uh, I, I've only seen the video once or twice, but I, I thought it was really well done. And uh, I definitely want to pick that up eventually. It does sound interesting. I can't play it. I don't have any Nintendo uh, systems anymore. So yeah. that kind of puts the kibosh to you uh, getting that thing. But For sure. But I would, I would definitely say watch the trailer because... Nintendo does a pretty good job of making pretty funny trailers for uh, their characters' uh, reveals for that game. Like when they announced uh, the Castlevania characters, they had uh, uh, Luigi get killed by, I believe, Dracula. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so that was that was fun. So he uh, kind of wanted to suck his blood and took it a little too far? Yeah. Well, um, if you're familiar at all with the Luigi's Mansion games, uh, it was kind of like a tie-in with that where they kind of subtly announced, a, a, I, th I think they, it was then that they announced a new Luigi's Mansion game and then, you know, tied it all together with uh, him going to a haunted mansion, which was happened to be uh, Dracula's. That is interesting. Dracula's mansion is now being owned and lived in by Luigi Mario. Yes. And Mario Mario. Mario, Jumpman Mario. Everyone's favorite psychopath. Um, I'm going to shut the camera off for just a minute. Guys, you'll see a picture of me smoking a pipe. But what's going on is I just realized I uh, forgot to open the window. So just give me a second. Greg will still be here. Entertain the entertain the people, Greg. Oh, oh dear. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not very good at improv. Um, how's everyone doing out there today? You're doing good? Good. Glad to hear it. Me? I'm doing okay. A little tired, but, uh, but I'm here. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully that wasn't too painful. Oh, they were they were quite engaged. So, what are you uh, smoking over there? Well, I'm smoking my Treepus pipe, and in it is some Merryweather from the Country Squire. Nice. <clears throat> Trying to get used to this new uh, look for the for the camera. Yeah. Not quite sure where I should be sitting. But anyway, that's uh, beside the point. If it gets too bad, I'll just take my phaser here and uh, shoot the camera out. Right. <laughs> that's what I've been actually doing a lot of the last little bit is watching some Star Trek. I am just about to start Deep Space Nine. I just hit Season 5, Episode 3. 
so it's time to start DS9 for my Watch Them in the Order They Were Aired In project. Hmm, that's cool. Had to wait on Deep Space Nine, so I was going to start it right at the, uh, you know, it's going to say season five, episode one. Go, okay, it's two, uh, the end of a two-parter, and I'll do the two-part DS9 like the next night or something like that. But then I noticed that O'Brien was still in Deep Space, or in, still in Next Generation at that time. And since he's on Deep Space Nine, um, I had to wait. <laughs> There's He's in the first two episodes of season five on Next Generation. So I'm going, okay, so that's approximately when they aired the first episode of Deep Space Nine. Hmm. So that was interesting because that, that, that would have been a really juxtaposition if, he, if I were to watch Deep Space Nine first and then all of a sudden Brian's back over on the Enterprise. What? Yeah, that would have been different. Oh, yeah, it would have been very much different. So is that the only thing you've been watching as of late? Oh, uh, let's see. No, I went back into Star back into Star Wars. Of course, I'm watching uh, The Mandalorian as it comes out because, well, I can because I'm caught up on it. And uh, I've also went back and I started re-watching... Uh, Star Wars Rebels, the animated series that's set in between um, A New Hope hasn't happened yet so it's in between the end of episode 3 um, where Anakin becomes Darth Vader and the events of A New Hope where you know Leia gets so it's before that, it's before Rogue One it's like in that sweet spot. Yeah. Kind of a in between time that they like to do uh, some of those like side stories like um, I think Jedi Fallen Order takes place during that time. At least I think so. Maybe. Yeah. I, I do know that uh, Mandalorian takes place after Return of, the, Return of the Jedi, but before The Force Awakens, from what they're what they've been saying, and, or actually, what there's a documentary on the first season on Disney Plus in regards to the making of the Mandalorian, and I haven't watched mm-hmm. it, but uh, the Star Wars TV Talk podcast guys did watch it. And I listened to their show. And from what they said, it's in the documentary that uh, Filoni says this is the time frame it's set in. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I always, uh, I always enjoy watching like Star Wars documentaries. There's a really good one. I think I've told you about it, but there's one... Um, that you can watch on YouTube and it's about 20 minutes long. I don't know if it's an official documentary but it's called um, How Star Wars Was Saved in the Editing Bay and it's all about um, the first cut of uh, the first uh, of uh, A New Hope and how um, George's wife at the time and I think another person went in and re-edited his film and uh, salvaged it and it kind of uh, talks about the points where, um, you know, scenes diverge and how they were rearranged or uh, scenes that were cut out. It's a, it's well worth uh, checking out. I will have to see if I can find that. But uh, yeah, um, so it's been fun. I'm uh, about either halfway through or all the way through the first season, I think. Hmm. I'd have to check to be honest I've watched it all the way through before and uh, I thought it was fun you know new characters uh, old characters new ish characters characters that uh, Disney kiboshed when they bought the uh, franchise being brought back in like uh, 
Thrawn, for example. And Ahsoka came back. It was from the Clone Wars. It's pretty good. That's good. I've definitely heard a lot about Ahsoka. Rumor is she's coming back in the Mandalorian, so we'll be looking for that um, during this season. I uh, I think that's a good idea. She's such a fan favorite. Well, it seems the plan might be to bring a couple of fan favorites back from that series. Um, not only are they thinking of bringing back... Uh, Ahsoka from that they're looking at bringing back the Mandalorian character from that series Sabine Wren which makes perfect sense because it's A, a show about the Mandalorians and mm -hmm. B Sabine was the one who found the Darksaber in Rebels so you know we might want to see her again right What about you? I know your 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 viewing time has probably been fairly limited with your first child being here now and a couple months couple months in. He'll be uh, he'll be two months at the end of this month, right? No, yes. And then we November. Have a, yeah, we have a couple of about two weeks to go, two and a half weeks to go before it's this two months. Um, yeah, I mean my viewing time's kind of been taken up a bit. Um, you know, between that and uh, learning an instrument and everything, it's been kind of, uh, you know, fit TV in when we can. My wife and I have been watching uh, a show called Brooklyn Nine-Nine uh, during our, our dinner time, which is, uh, you know, we like to watch, uh, you know, NBC sitcoms here and there, uh, at least the good ones. Like, we were big fans of The Office, uh, Community, uh, which is one of my all-time favorite shows, and uh, Parks and Rec. And uh, this one's this one's pretty good. You know, it has a, a SNL alum, um, Andy Samberg as the main character, um, and there's you know been a couple of SNL char uh, actors to kind of pop up here and there. So it's always it's kind of like a, a fun you know treat if you uh, you know follow SNL at all at least for the past 10 to 15 years. Uh, besides that, um, I recently watched, uh, since we're into kind of like, you know, Halloween wasn't all that long ago, I watched a somewhat spooky, well, I wouldn't say spooky, but I like, I like creepy things. Like, I don't like horror, like gore and stuff like that. I prefer more like, things that kind of give you a little bit of a chill uh, you know uh, kind of unsettle you a little bit and uh, there's this uh, great documentary and it's called uh, Missing 411 The Hunted that's on uh, Amazon Prime right now I watched the first one about two years ago during around the same uh, you know Halloween time right and uh, what the Missing 411 project is is it's this guy by the name of uh, David Politis. Uh, he's a former cop and now kind of more of like a private investigator. And his uh, goal is basically looking at uh, disappearances in national parks all around North America. And I believe he's kind of expanded that into like the UK, the Europe and Australia. But it's mainly focused in the United States, and there's certain clusters around uh, the United States and in Canada where people have uh, vanished in national parks under mysterious circumstances. The first movie prim primarily focused on, if I'm remembering correctly, pr primarily children that, uh, that vanished uh, in national parks. And either have never been found, uh, or their you know their remains are found years later, 
Uh, and usually when the remains are found, it's in a place that was heavily searched already. And so there was no way that it could have been missed before. Um, although in that one, the, the last story kind of uh, takes a, a little bit of a turn. Uh, in this in this documentary, uh, Missing 411, The Hunted, it focuses on hunters, uh, hunters that have gone missing in national parks and uh, in the wilderness. And you know, ask the question why people who know, and, and these are people that have gone to these places, you know, it's not like it's their first experience going there. So right. Like they know that they know the place very well and shouldn't have gone missing, but they did. And, you know, some haven't been found with others, you know, their remains have been found. Uh, a lot of the stories just are uh, quite compelling. I've listened to some podcasts that uh, uh, David Politis has been on. And so I know, uh, like the, with the first movie, I had already kind of heard of some of the stories that he was talking about. With this one, it was all new information. Um, but it's it, it fits that kind of mysterious, uh, kind of like uh, puts a chill on your spine, uh, up your spine kind of uh, creepiness that, that I tend to enjoy. And what I appreciate about the Missing 411 stuff is that there's, David doesn't really present to you a reason necessarily why each person has disappeared, like like why the, why the people have disappeared. It's more of just asking questions and kind of showing like the the strange circumstances under how they disappeared. Huh. Sounds interesting. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's <clears throat> <coughs> there's certain things that you kind of get a, a, a sense of what he probably thinks is, happens to them, but it's not like it's forced down your throat or anything. So I appreciate that. Nice, nice. And then besides that, uh, there is another series that I've been looking at. It was one that I was kind of interested in watching with you at some point. Okay. And it's a show from the 1970s from the UK, and it's called Sapphire and Steel. And uh, with with the way that it was like a it's a science fiction story about time travel but instead of these two characters sapphire and steel uh traveling through time instead it's stories about time invading an area or a space okay it's so like the past coming back you know to invade our time and the first story takes place in a remote house on an island where uh, parents of two children have disappeared while reciting an old nursery rhyme. And the whole story is about the power of nursery rhymes and their dark his uh, the dark history that a lot of each one has. Right. Wh which I, I'm really into. I like the, the whole, you know, kind of macabre uh, kind of like you know history that uh, these simple kind of sounding nursery rhymes have and it, again like it, it's a you can tell that it's low budget uh, and each story like takes place over the span of like seven episodes or so and that that's like a season okay um, and so it's one continuous story and while it, they don't have a whole lot in terms of the budget they manage to figure out little things that uh, still can be quite uh, effective in uh, getting the creepiness across. So if you like kind of classic Doctor Who, um, it's like that, but a little bit more serious and you, there's no nobody's wrapped up in painted bubble wrap and uh, <laughs> going after him. Uh, going after you. Although, to be fair, when they did that, bubble wrap was the new thing. So, uh, it's not, wasn't as commonplace as it is today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can see that. Yeah, I'm just a fan of like old retro kind of TV shows. Like, you know, I love the Twilight Zone, uh, the, the classic series, and uh, I love the, you know, old science fiction and uh, creepy kind of stories that are, to are uh, retro. I feel like they have a lot more imagination than uh, the stuff that's out there, so, uh, uh, that's out today sometimes. You're probably not wrong. I mean, some of the stuff that's out there today is so derivative. You can uh, walk into a movie theater and go, oh, she's going to die in five, four, three, two. Dead. Right. Although, I, I, that doesn't always bother me. Sometimes I can be, there's a little bit of fun predicting something and being right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not not always, but it, you know, the, it does feel nice to be like, oh, I think I know where this is going, and you're right. So notice that pipe you're smoking there has got some bamboo on it, right? Yes, uh, this is a Nording uh, Hunter pipe, and it's uh, a series of pipe that uh, Nording, you know, comes out with each year each year they do a different animal um this one is the beaver and it's a rusticated apple i believe it also comes in a smooth finish but this pipe actually was one of my dream pipes when i first started smoking the pipe oh nice and i remember seeing pictures of it online and being man i would love to own that pipe one day and uh for valentine's day about Two years after I started smoking a pipe, I found one on eBay, managed to win the bid, and uh, I've had it ever since. And it's probably one of the pipes that if uh, I had the chance to run into a burning building to save and I could only grab like a couple, this would be one of them. Not that I recommend that you run into a burning building to, to save your pipes. No, no, no. I recommend personally having a go bag for your pipes. It has right by your bed so that, you know, just on those rare occasions you feel like, you know, the house might burn, start burning down tonight. I'm going to throw my pipes in this case and house is on fire. Grab the pipes, grab the kids <laughs> and go. Because if you, don't cause, sure. yeah. cause if you grab the kids <laughs> first, I mean, your pipes are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah, just don't let your wife hear you say it in that order. I know I wouldn't be able to, to get away with that if I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. If my wife actually listened or watched this show, I would be dead tomorrow. Yeah. That would be the end of the show. I'd be dead. She'd be in jail. The kids would be in the system. We don't want that. No, so we'll just forget that it ever happened and... YouTube, shut up. You didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Same with you, podcast. You didn't hear nothing. In all reality, though, I, I joke. My, my wife knows that if it came to the choice over my stuff or my kids, the kids would come first. Of because course. The insurance can replace the stuff. They can't replace the kids, so. Right. Uh, but I was, uh, yeah, I was smoking some uh, Cornell and Deal uh, Briar Fox in that pipe. And now I'm actually switching to uh, my Stanwell Vario uh, Bulldog. Nice. With uh, some old Joe Krantz uh, Blue Label. Yeah, for me, there's a few a uh, few pipes that I still need to get for my collection. It won't be complete until those at least one example of each one of the one of these names are in it. Let's see, so I've already got a near up. I've got I've got a Peterson. I've got a couple of Savinelli's. Of course, I got my myriad of Canadian-made Brigham's. But I still need to get a Stanwell. I still need to get 
Nope, I was gonna say rot, but I forgot. There, I got a rot bulldog sitting behind me. Um, Stanwell for sure. How about Dunhill? I don't think I'll ever be able to afford a Dunhill. There are those lucky people that run across them at uh, the states uh, at, at uh, antique stores for twenty bucks. So far, I have not been one of those lucky people. Yeah. And so far, since COVID, you know, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to go out antiquing. <laughs> yeah. No, I, like I mentioned on Monday, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, find a $30 Peterson at uh, while antiquing. And so, and normally, I, al I always run into the same old. Uh, Dr. Grabrows. Uh, occasionally you'll run into uh, K. Woody's, but uh, uh, yellow bowls and, and uh, pipes of that standard. Uh, but when I saw that Peterson there and for that price, I, I, I had to pick it up. Now, just so everybody listening knows, there is nothing wrong with Dr. Grabo or yellow bowl if you get the right pipes. They are cheap mm -hmm. pipes. And by cheap, I mean they were the, you know, everyday Joe Blow on the street, you know, would go into the drugstore and buy a pipe pipe. They were not in the league of Dunhill and Peterson and whoever was around back then for higher end pipes. Mm -hmm. For sure. They, they definitely had, you know, a purpose. But, uh, they just don't, you know, they just don't appeal to me at the moment. But there's, they certainly have their fans, though. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> just, uh, not this, about th two to three weeks ago, I sent, it was a little bit longer, but it was then when the question got answered, I noticed uh, one of my pipes that I cleaned up, the yellow bowl, was uh, honey cured, and I was Wondered what that meant. So I sent the question in to uh, Country Squire Radio and John David answered it for me. So that was awesome. But uh, it's one of those things where you're sitting around, yep, yeah, and you've got a yellow bowl there. There's a good collector's market for that. So I hope you're enjoying it. And of course, I am enjoying it when I smoke it. I don't plan on selling it. But it's just one of those weird things, you know. I'm sitting there going, out of all the pipes that I have so far, so far, my Peterson, my Joby's, my near up bring them etc I have like I have one Dr. Grey bow and one yellow bowl oh wait no that's not right I have two yellow bowls I think this is a yellow bowl yeah this little nose warmer is a yellow bowl anyway and it smokes great which is uh, the most important thing that you can ask for yes for exactly it doesn't matter if it's a Ten dollar pipe or a thousand dollar pipe, it's gotta be able to smoke and smoke well. Right. Because you can have a, a pricier pipe that doesn't smoke very well. Currently my most expensive pipe isn't even here. It's still being made. Yes. And you will get it eventually. Well, I think he's making some progress on it. He, he uh, texted me for uh, stem color about a week or so back, so. You're getting there. But, uh, and you were mentioning on, on pipes that you need. Uh, I would imagine that one of those pipes would be a, a Savinelli Bing, correct? Yes, yes. Not because I need a Savinelli, just because I need a Bing's favorite. That's certainly on my list of uh, wish list pipes. And if we're going in the shape direction, what I need also, I'm trying to think, is this a shape? Yes, it is. Is a Canadian. Because I don't have one. And, you know, I'm a Canadian without a Canadian. Right. Dude, you know, and that has to be uh, some sort of pipe smoking sin. 
It yeah. must be rectified. It wasn't in the pipe smoking rules I read, but you know, I think it might be an unwritten one. Right. What else? Um, yeah, I don't got, don't have too much. Um, game wise, I've been laying off Sea of Thieves for, for a bit. Not because I don't enjoy the game anymore. It's just one of those things that uh, the last couple of updates haven't really lended anything to the game for, for me. So it's just a, uh, gonna take a break until probably Chris after Christmas and, go back to it just you know too much of a good thing you know right and you have to do that sometimes you have to kind of walk away from a game and uh, enjoy something else for a bit yeah because there's so many games out there right now that are they're are just insane like Minecraft's been around for years and everybody and their brother plays that but uh, uh, first person wise, or you know, or um, maybe not first person, but multiplayer, uh, online multiplayer wise, um, in the pirate genre, you got Blazing Sails, it's uh, Fortnite, but with pirates, basically. You've got uh, Rogue Company, which a lot of the streamers are playing right now. Among, Among Us is another one that's being played right now. Yes, that's a highly popular game right now. I've uh, I've enjoyed the memes that have come out of uh, that game. Yep, memes, YouTube parodies, they're they're great. Mm -hmm. all, all the stuff that you get out of out of streaming culture sometimes for like uh, social media memes and stuff. They're, the memes are just awesome. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, it's one of the reasons why I still enjoy going onto Facebook. Yeah, no. no uh, I, I hate Facebook. <laughs> I'm never on it. Well, if you ever get on, I, I highly recommend the Christian Pipe Smoking uh, group. Uh, that tends to be uh, fairly laid back and uh, has good discussions. Well, that is interesting. Uh, a pipe smoking group on Facebook with good discussions versus every other pipe smoking group on there, save maybe one other one. I haven't seen anything too bad on the, on the groups that I've been in, but uh, I know it can get pretty heated on uh, certain forums. Yeah. But, you know, that's... What what I like about the this life uh, this life pipe I mean pipe life group it's just uh, very laid back absolutely good people and yes I am cheating because I shouldn't be able to access it except you should be able to access yeah, it yeah except I should but based on the rules I'm not supposed to be able to let's see I used to play video games, and then my son was born, and then that stopped happening. But before that all happened, I was playing uh, uh, one of my friends on Discord. I've, I've known this guy for a couple of years, and uh, I've been part of a Nintendo group since really for about 10 years now, maybe a little bit more. And so, you know, some people come and go, but there's been a, a core group of people that have consistently been there and I was always known as the Dark Souls guy because I'd played uh, all three and, and talked about that series a lot and this guy finally picked up a copy of Dark Souls Trilogy for a PS4 and uh, is currently playing through the first game and so I've been walking him through that and giving him pointers and everything and it's been even though I haven't really played a whole lot of Dark Souls as of late, uh, it's been kind of like I'm kind of uh, living vicariously through him 
because I, I I remember the first time I went through that game uh, on my own, and uh, you know, there's nothing quite like it. I, I mean, I can keep playing it over and over again, but uh, <clears throat> that first experience, you, you never quite forget it. Uh, right. If it's a, a game that you enjoy. Besides that, I've been playing, uh, well, I was playing, and I will get back to it eventually. It's uh, Dragon Quest V. Uh, uh, Quest for the Heavenly Bride, or the Hand of the Heavenly Bride. And that's an RPG that originally came, uh, was out for the Super Famicom, the Super Nintendo in Japan, but never <laughs> came over to America. And then in 2009, it was brought over to, uh, it was brought over worldwide on the DS uh, with uh, an extra wife that, uh, uh, extra you know choice in uh, the marriage portion. But essentially, it's unlike other RPGs where it's kind of, you know, you go on a quest with a group of people and stop some sort of bad guy. Instead, this is the story about one person, uh, you know, going on some adventures as a child and then you know, with a, a, uh, an adventurer dad, horrible things happen and then you're on your own at time jumps. But essentially the, the whole game is the story of one person going through their life uh, okay. trying to, to stop this uh, uh, the eventual bad person that killed his father but at some point you end up with a choice of uh, two, originally two but uh, it's now three people uh, three ladies that you can marry each one kind of has their own advantages but uh when you marry after you marry them it, it determines what uh you know what your kids will look like and everything but it's a it's a cool story oh uh, and one of them uh you know the, the first two are really sweet but the new one that they add it has a lot of attitude and, and kind of pushes you around <laughs> and i i'm right before the marriage ceremony so i'm trying to debate uh uh i i can make three save files so i'm going to make one for each bride gotcha I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go with the, the um the very uh you know forceful one just because I, i've heard that she's quite funny i see yeah and honestly like going into the holiday season i don't this will be the first holiday that i can really remember that i i really don't think i'm going to be asking for any games for christmas um the only exception might be I'm really interested in uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 HD for uh, PS4, because I used to be a big Tony Hawk Pro Skater fan in uh, late high school and early college. I didn't think those games were still around, but I guess skating is still a thing, so... Yeah, Tony Hawk is like 50, I think. That makes sense. He was... He was uh, um, fairly popular and active uh, when I was in high school, and mm -hmm. I'm in my early 40s, so he was he was a little bit older than me, so that it fits. Yeah, and I believe at least one of his sons is a pro skater now, so and I think he's actually in the game too. So the interesting thing about the uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two is. I believe they now have all the skaters that were in the game uh, looking like how they look now. So they're all older looking. All older looking doing the things that used to do in their, in their teens and 20s. Yes. That's uh, not going to be realistic at all. <laughs> uh, they, they need to add a new meter for uh, back pain. Your back pain caused you to miss that ollie. Oh, you landed wrong. There goes your bad knee. You've pulled your lower back. You are now in traction. Quick, collect all the letters for the word chiropractor. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. True to life. Right. Yeah, I love those games as a kid, so I, I, I'm very tempted to 
to pick those games up. If uh, they had, I, I hope they do uh, three and four eventually because the first four Tony Hawk games were so good. I wasn't really big into systems when I was younger because I didn't have one, but uh, some friends did. But the, the one game that I really liked that I could get good at quick was NASCAR. Ooh. Because I'd always get, you know, because there was always a time where a buddy of mine would be playing NASCAR when I go over there and we'd race against each other. And it would take me about 15 minutes to relearn the game. But then I could at least challenge him and make the race, in, race interesting. Ooh. But at the same time, I've been a PC gamer since PC gaming was invented. And right. uh, racing games were a PC staple for the longest time. So really, it was just a matter of, okay, I got to learn this controller. Because mm -hmm. there's no WSAD on the thing. <laughs> right. Which, you know, being a console gamer, when I moved to starting to try to play games on PC that uh, yeah that uh, the keyboard was a, a big kind of intimidating thing for me that I, I never and it's still to this day I, I struggle with it when playing games unless it's like the, the those Microsoft packs with like uh, you know Solitaire or uh, Chips Challenge or th those type of Chips things. Challenge I haven't thought of that one in a while Yeah, at uh, my homeschool, uh, for high school, we would, uh, the, the big thing was for everyone to play Chips Challenge and we would see how far we could get. That and the pinball game. Oh, the, pinball the was fun. Mm -hmm. There's one they should redo for, Microsoft should redo for the PCs. Space Pinball HD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for real. I would definitely play it. Chips Challenge 2020, avoid the coronavirus. <laughs> I think you can actually get find uh, some version of Chips Challenge on iPhone. Yeah, that doesn't do me any good. I'm on Android. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, they might have it on Android, too. Hmm. Let's find out. I'll just search the App Store. Got my phone right here. I would play hours of Chips Challenge. You know, kids today with their, their streaming services and their instant downloads, you were stuck with the computer games that were installed on the computer. Yeah. And that's, and we liked it back then. And we, uh, you know, you, you played what was on there, whether you cared for it or not. Between that, Carmen San Diego, number munchers, good times. They have a bunch of different, you know, knockoffs like Romney's Gauntlet and Chuck's Challenge and things like that. They're obvious, obvious ripoffs, but they don't have the actual one. I'm gonna have to YouTube Chip Ch Chips Challenge and see if anyone's done like a. <laughs> an in-depth analysis of that game. I mean, it, it's so ubiquitous. And uh, I, I feel like a lot of people from our generation play that game. So I, and there's enough people out there on the whole, uh, you know, discussing games kind of, uh, you know, YouTube cha uh, channel kind of uh, scene that I'm sure someone's done some sort of like documentary or a deep dive into uh, the history of uh, Chips Challenge. Not that I've seen, but I, I don't follow all that many gamers as far as game channels and whatnot on YouTube. There are a ton of them. Oh, yeah. I, 
the the nice thing though is that uh, there's because uh, I like the games that I like learning about are a little bit more in the uh, they are not as popular. Like I I know enough of uh, the, the enough history about the Mario games that I don't necessarily need to watch another documentary. On it, <laughs> right, but, right. Uh, but uh, it's uh. There, there's enough out there that uh, you know, even surprising. Uh, that there's a lot of games out there that you'd be surprised that have like some sort of like detailed YouTube video on them about. Oh, you're probably right. Like there are a lot of indie games out there that I didn't even know existed, and uh, I've watched the stuff for them because it's interesting. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I think we're going to call it here, guys, because, well... Yes, actually, real quick, there is a uh, uh, history of chips challenge on YouTube. Go so figure. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, let, let's get to the outro. Oh, yeah, the outro, which I don't have a copy of in front of me, so I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> But really, when it comes right down to it, if you want to follow us throughout the week, I'm at DR Allen 201. Greg's at the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter. Um, similar on Instagram, is it not? Uh, it's uh, just the Badger Piper on Instagram. So it's all one word, no uh, underscores. And the show, of course, is at Syndicated Pipe on Twitter. Uh, here on YouTube, of course, you can find it. If you're watching us, you're already there, so no need to say that it's uh, Syndicated Pipe Club. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell so that uh, you can be notified as soon as our latest video uploads. Uh, be sure to check out the podcast version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and uh, all the casts that are out there. We're probably on there. And if you really need to, you can just email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com as we've recycled that email address, and that's what it's just going to be, even though we were a pipe podcast and not really a flash podcast anymore. But that really puts uh, puts another one in the bag. Anything else you want to say before we sign out there, Greg? I'm good. I'm ready to watch some uh, Chips Challenge history. And I am as well. Maybe not ready for that, but I'm good, so... Everybody, as always, thanks for watching. Good smokes, good entertainment, and we will likely see you next week. Catch you later. <laughs>